visited New York Maker Faire. Let me show you what I saw on today's Filament Friday. Hey, what are you doing? Filament Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. I spent a good part of the Maker Faire with my buddy Joel Telling, the 3D printing nerd. We had a lot of fun. We both spent time at the CME CNC booth. We were sponsored by Steve Weingut, the owner, and he's the creator of the Big Part Daddy. This is the biggest 3D printer I have ever seen. And while we were there, he printed this huge airplane. It was taller than me, so it was amazing. I did get out to the fair, and there was so much to see. I'll give you a brief summary. I went to the 3D printing village, which was a bunch of tents with old printers, new printers, companies, individuals. It was really cool to see. Cohesion 3D, they do 32-bit boards for Wanho and for lasers. So they were there. There were wood delta printers that people had built. Printed Solid was there. Uh, this was interesting. This was Auto Drop 3D. It's a delta printer, and the bed actually moves, scrapes the part off, and drops it in a bin below, and then moves back and starts printing again. There was another one, ICOP. They actually had beds that would go in and out, although it took forever to see that, so I didn't get to see it in action. There were rep wrap machines. BuildTech was there. I got to talk to them and actually got some more BuildTech. I couldn't believe it. Ono was there and actually had their $99 cell phone printer. Their old Kickstarter was actually working and printing. Not the best quality in my opinion, but at least they showed it was actually working. Next to the 3D printing area was the CNC and laser cutter area. There's several companies displaying different things there. Some of them were really cool looking, some of them were really advanced. Glowforge was there. I got to see them just setting up. Shopbot was there. A lot of familiar names, but then Dremel was there with not only a 3D printer, but they now have a laser cutter they'll be releasing in 2018. Next to that was the electronics area, and there were so many things to check out. Internet of Things modules. There was an Arduino kit for schools, and they may use my book for this. This is really cool. BeagleBoard was there, and they introduced a pocket beagle. I got my hands on one of those, and DigiKey had their maker I.O. Unfortunately, I was able to meet Technicali. That was really cool. This isn't really electronic, but this was a really cool chair. I wonder how long it would take to 3D print it. There was a Fibonacci clock and a kit you could buy to make your own. And at the Raspberry Pi booth, people were learning how to program. How cool is that? I left the big tents and went out into the open area, and this caught my eye. A huge marble machine. They sell these as a smaller kit, but the big one was for display. They even had one with a 3D printed spiral shaft. I found this mechanical ant really cool looking. And then, of course, R2-D2 was popular with the little guys. And then a robot arm controlled by Arduino. I eventually made it back to Joseph Prusa's tent where he had announced his MK3, his latest 3D printer, and had a lot of nice improvements. But the most important to me were the electronics changes and software changes. I was able to do an audio interview with him, so I'm going to play it here for you. Listen to our discussion. All right, I want to talk a little bit more, Joseph, uh, about the electronics and some of the new stuff. And you got the IR sensor and a new board with better drivers. Yeah, the Tranimic 20, the 2130. And is this going to get, what, what's the real performance improvement with those drivers over what you had before? Uh, well, I would say, I would say they are next generation. The Allegro's, they are quite old. Right. They don't have the features like these. Uh, you, you have Stallguard, which detects the skip layers, which enables us to, you know, recover from shifted layers. That's, right. that's a big thing. And so that, yeah, so now this is, gives you more feedback that you can do more control in your yes, firmware. We can, we can basically go inside the driver through SPI and read all the information and set everything you can imagine in the driver. Otherwise, you know, the Allegro, you just step, send, step in there. And well, that, that, that's about it. This is far and away better than any of these i3 clones you're going to see out there. No, this thing I, I is would, just... I would go much further. I mean, with the amount of sensors and technology we have here. I mean, we have e 3 db 6 Show me, show me uh, even the top class competitors who have real deal E3D. Right. Uh, we have genuine Bontech. Who has Bontech? What, what other printer is driving the filament from both sides? I, I would say it, we, we sh it shouldn't be compared to the i3 clones from China. It should be uh, compared against the Sigmas and Zartraxes and the Ultimakers. Yet, and yet, you're doing all this for $599 now for an MK2S and, and 749. 749 on this printer with all these features. I am eager to see you know, what will happen next year. 
if some of the bigger companies will have the guts to release printers without these features like the, you know, the, the power loss detection and all this kind of stuff. And we didn't even get a chance to talk about his multicolor extruder. But these new drivers are so important for the future of 3D printing. Let me explain why I think that is. This is a stepper motor. A stepper motor has a magnet inside and multiple coils. When you spin it, you're actually generating electricity. And you can see this. If you just take your printer that's turned off and move the head back and forth, you'll see the backlighting of the LCD actually light. It's generating voltage. It's known as backwards electromotive force or back EMF. So when a stepper motor is spinning, there are coils inside that are not energized. So they'll actually generate voltage. And that's what the trinamic drivers are actually picking up. And they take that information and they send it out a serial peripheral interface or SPI that the microcontroller can then read. And that's what Joseph Prusha and his team are doing. And they're reading that to sense when a motor stalls so they don't need end stops anymore. And they can monitor if a motor is slowing down, maybe resistance that would cause a skipped step or shifting of the layers. And there's many more things because now there's some form of feedback to the motors, which we never had before on these home 3D printers. So I think what they're doing is really a leap ahead and it's just going to make our printers better. That's why it's so exciting. Outside the booth, there were presentations, one that included Joel Telling and Angus from Makers Muse representing 3D printing. And I met a ton of fans wherever I went. It was so awesome. In the evenings, we had a Matter Hackers meetup, and I met some Patreon supporters and other YouTubers. We had a G-Create meet, I got to see the G-Create offices. And then in the evening, we went to Preston's office, which was down the road a bit, and rode some electric scooters and bikes. I got to see where Preston does his press research show, and we also partied with the Ultimaker guys. And as a final reward, we got the party on a rooftop with Inventables and Matter Hackers. It was just an awesome, awesome view. Overall, it was a lot of fun, and I highly recommend if you get a chance to visit the New York Maker Fair when it comes around again next year. And Joel, if you steal my intro again, I might just have to fly out to Seattle and steal yours. That's it for this week. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.